The next three episodes were maybe the best revenge had to offer. Not only that Emily finally gets her revenge of Conrad and Victoria. They also establish the war between Emily and Victoria and this time for a far better reason than puppy dog Daniel. To make it clear I am not a big fan of violence and I cannot stand American TV shows right now. Who seem to try to win a battle which TV show is more bloody and creepy with its scenes. But with Pascal's death in this episode they really raised the stakes. And showed for the first time since Formunder's death in season 2 how dangerous Conrad really is. From the first season when we learned Conrad had David killed because he was afraid that the conspiracy to put him in jail would be discovered in a retrial. There was always this luring danger that Conrad could kill Emily as well when he would find out who she really was. Now with this violent scene we see at the end of the episode there is no doubt what he would do to Emily. Cause in fact she is the only one who stands between Conrad's need maintaining his life as a free man and a lifetime in prison. Besides the threat of Gordon Murphy aka the white-haired man in season 1 I think revenge never was that dangerous for Emily. But let's dive into the actual episode. Like with every episode that is close to the finale I like that all conflicts finally evolve and culminate in this. Conrad has to find an adequate answer for Pascal's threat. And Emily has to speed up her revenge since Victoria is up to her. Finally Aidan is more than ever motivated to get his hands dirty now he knows Pascal killed his father. And with Oscar Chapman dead he and Emily are running out of options to take Conrad down. About Emily's monologue. Nice try making her revenge game more political by calling it a revolution. But for me the metaphor does not fit at all. Cos Aiden, Jack and even Nolan called Emily out several times for being that selfish with her revenge ender. And if you think about it this is really ridiculous. Cause we are talking about a revenge that was planned by a teenage girl who wants to revenge her father's death. What could be more selfish and personal? And even more less political? I know they try to tell us with some of her targets that she is doing all this not only for herself but to right wrongs and pretend those people from doing more harm. Like the senator who had questionable moral standards. Or the judge who was beating his wife. Her foster mother who still was abusing children. And finally in this season the company owner who endangers our environment and makes people sick. Anyway I like those little scenes between Aidan and Conrad. And I really enjoyed Conrad's funny remarks. This season he is a real competition for Nolan. This joke about him wearing driving gloves and not killing because he even does not want to get this hands dirty by driving. And the joke he makes on Aidan's and Oscar Chapman's behalf wearing woman's clothes to disguise his real identity. Just hilarious. Aidan's concerned face was reason enough to get suspicious what Conrad's move would be if he gets more impatient, and is tanking matters into his own hands. For now it was clever to lull Conrad in false security by making Aidan conspire with him to kill Pascal. That certainly bought Emily time to deal with Pascal who shows himself as a hopeless romantic by proposing to Victoria at her most famous spot the cupola. For my taste they rushing into it but I guess since they both are not that young anymore and have broken marriages behind them. They think why to waste time when we want to be happy. And they know each other long enough since Vicky was a young teenage mom when she first met Pascal. Interesting the contrast in clothes. 
I know Victoria has no job and nothing to do but wait for Pascal as Margot pointed out earlier. And of course to plot her revenge on Emily. But while Pascal is fully clothed and looks like a dashing modern knight in armor Victoria is still wearing a morning gown. To underline the cliché she is wearing a light pink tone while Pascal goes for a classical black suit. I hate to say it but in this season they often fall back into old stereotypes about women. Here that fragile woman who needs to be saved by her man. Spoiler alert. Only to show Victoria in the next episode as this caricature of a Medici woman who kills with venom. So she impersonates two common tropes about women. The victim who needs to be saved by men and the demonized woman who kills to get what she wants. Another thing I like how Madeleine Stowe shows Victoria's reaction to Pascal's proposal. She is not saying yes right away and is happy in an instance. No she turns away and the camera stays long on her face. It seems as if for a moment she is searching for strength to give the right answer. And I think I see pure fear in her eyes. Maybe the fear of the unknown. Since she does not know how the relationship with Pascal turns out this time. Or it is already a hint of fear losing Pascal like she did with David. Because she must know in which great danger Pascal is because he threatened Conrad to expose him. But finally she gives in and I like the next scene with her and both children celebrating the news. Victoria looks not only happy but beautiful as ever. Her hair falls far better than this awful hairstyle she wore in that episode with that poker game between her and Emily and the form-fitting red dress with that a little bit floating skirt suits her well. Of course they did this on purpose showing us this happy patchwork finally before they destroy all this with Pascal's untimely death. About Emily handing Aidan a gun. I still cannot figure out what Aidan and Emily had planned for Pascal if Conrad had not killed him. Was she really willing to let Aidan kill him to take revenge for his father's death? In season 1 she learned that killing the murder of her father was not right so she let Gordon Murphy go. And in season 2 after Formunder's death she did not even consider to kill anyone of the Graysons. The only time she wanted to see them dead was during her blackouts so far. So why changing her morals for Aidan? She knew that he was capable to kill without regret or mercy since he has done it multiple times. Or is she just trying to keep Aiden from going rogue and staying on her side until her fight is over? Anyway I cannot believe that she would let Aiden kill Pascal like that. On the other hand she was definitely willing to put Pascal in even more danger and let him be the bait for Conrad. So maybe she was willing at least to let him die. But since her plan failed epically because of Conrad we will never know. And the writers have the best excuse to never mention any question about this again. About Pascal's abduction and Emily's act, they almost got me here. For a moment I really thought Emily could have been an agent who was working on a case would not be the first agent who got addicted with a big case. But then I remembered her stunt in one of the last episodes of season 1 when she impersonated a FBI agent to get new information out of Nolan's aunt who worked for her father as a secretary. But I like this frame they gave the episode. Even if it is fake this one makes it look like a totally different show. And a nice tribute to use again one of Emily Van Camp's real surnames. Cause she actually has the middle name Rebecca. We first heard her full surname during her wedding with Daniel. When the officiant called her Emily Rebecca Thorne.
I also loved the tone of the scene very cold and efficient like the surroundings with all those blue and grey metallic colours. And Emily looks really mediocrity like a real agent with that black turtle neck and the bad fitting grey suit that shows her bra in the back. And I like the very official and elegant language they gave her. She sounds like a real agent who studied long and hard to get this job. And in a way the preparations for her revenge ender were compatible with the preparations of an FBI team for this kind of an operation. They had to study their targets to get a full picture of their habits. And they had to establish a psychological profile in order to get the best approach at him and be not surprised by their reactions. Finally it would take months or even years of preparations for a target as big as the Graysons. Pascal again behaves like the typical criminal stubborn and shrewd like a little kid. But I like Emily's outburst in the second scene when she is finally losing her temper and patience with him. It may be typical for those type of scenes and plot lines, but I think Emily did a great job in choreographing this. So her outburst is just an act to make Pascal believe her disguise. Especially since Aiden is coming in just at the right moment to give Emily's play more authenticity. Since he seems to be her fellow operative. And instead of Conrad who knows Aiden is the son of Trevor Mathis Pascal has no clue who Aiden is and how he is tied to Emily. So Pascal has not the slightest doubt or suspicion this could be anything but a long ongoing investigation of Conrad and his crimes. About Victoria's ruse for Emily. They got me with this. Too. Especially spoiler alert since David is finally back in the finale. And I must admit Victoria is acting really clever and controlled like Emily would do. Cause with this little trap she can confirm her suspicion about Emily. That she is doing this to revenge David and of course her real motive in doing so. The unforgiving thing Victoria does here is not that she confirms her suspicion by pretending a dead man to be alive. It is drawing her own daughter in by giving her and Emily hope their father could still be alive. I guess she wanted to test her psychological trap on David's second daughter first. Before she gets the message to Emily. And since she knows how familiar Charlotte got with Jack Victoria knew this news would get fast to Emily over her sister and Jack. About Conrad and Victoria again. I said in the episode before Victoria obviously has a type. Criminals and murderer. Since her first boyfriend after Pascal was an art forger and both Conrad and Pascal a murderer. But funny how desperate Conrad tries to paint Pascal in his darkest shades and shows all of his crimes to Victoria. Since he knows best how Victoria can see through all this. After all she stayed by his side even though she knew about his deeds. I think like with many people repression is Victoria's best friend. She cannot stand her own guilt nor the ones of people she loves. So she finds excuses and represses all those bad feelings that come with a guilty conscious. Anyway I almost believed Conrad's motives protecting her from being unhappy with Pascal. Because he delivered it really impressive and with much authenticity about Emily Victoria and Pascal. This triangle was the most interesting plot device for the whole season and I am glad that they came up with this. First Victoria's jealousy three episodes before cause Pascal seemed interested in Emily. Now her hate for Emily cause she might take Pascal away from her in a more serious way. The loss of Pascal and her retaliation that leads to an ongoing war between Victoria and Emily in season 4 was really compelling. And though very much sad also very much thrilling and entertaining. 
about Daniel's role in this. Another tribute to season 1. Again Daniel chooses his father's side. Like he did in the first season when he gave him the evidence Victoria handed over and wanted to give to the feeds to get her husband finally arrested for all his crimes in the past 20 years. Though I think here his help is misplaced since he had that war with Conrad only 10 seconds ago. Now he is helping him even though Daniel knows this could destroy his mother's happy end with Pascal. I know Conrad had to be warned and neither Pascal, Aidan, Emily or Victoria would do the honor, since they all wait for his downfall. But why should Daniel suddenly forget all his father has done to him in the last time? Besides he is the father of the woman Daniel is interested in. So what motive could he have to put all those people he cares about in danger and misery only to help his hated father? Or is his some sick favor for Margot who wants to overtake the family business but her father does not let her? So getting rid of Pascal is just the goal of Daniel's ambitions. Or is he again afraid that the David Clark scandal would throw a shadow on his personal and work life? like he did in season 2 and therefore helped his parents to fight off the initiative. Anyway for me more reasons speak against meddling with his father. But I guess Daniel is just not that smart and makes dumb decisions he regrets later and does not think about the grave consequences they have in the end. Not only for him but all the people near him. Maybe the writers also wanted to recur to the established Oedipus complex, best known in the Shakespeare play Hamlet in which the main protagonist Hamlet is jealous of the new husband of his mother. So maybe Daniel is jealous of Pascal because he wants to take his mother away from him by living on another continent with her. They already established the sick relationship between Victoria and her son from her point of view in the last three seasons. With the well-known competition between her and Emily over Daniel's affection and attention. Now it seems it is Daniel's turn to fight for the love of his mother. But he has like her a really sick and twisted way of doing so. About the cabin Charlotte and Jack find. I still cannot get this right, because I thought Victoria staged all this to lead Emily in a trap, but later they connect this to the people that are after David in the last season. So which of these two plots are true? Is it fake or did something gather information about David? And how can Victoria have David Clark's ring? She was no relative and still not engaged to him at the time he was arrested. So why did not Emily as his last relative or his wife get his personal belongings after his death? Spoiler alert! Or was he hiding in this cabin before he found a new hiding spot after his return? And if so why would he take off his ring? Anyway they did not answer any of these questions in the first episode of season 4. Which made me regret that they used a time jump without the typical secret at the beginning. I wish they had come up with some answers instead. But we will talk about the deception that comes with David Clark's return and the unanswered questions when we talk about season 4 about Margot and Pascal reconciled. Again an overused trope to make us feel her loss. But still it is a sweet scene in which they at least get to clear their conflict and just be happy for a while. About Nolan's and Emily's party outfits. I totally love the pattern and the colors of her dress and his suit. Looks really extravagant and fashionable. The only thing I disliked is that Emily's dress was that short. I think she never wore such a short skirt in the entire show. Yes she can wear it and her legs look great, but I like it more when she goes for a long robe or at least a decent hemline. At least she followed the rule never combine a short skirt with a revealing neckline. 
so she is wearing no cleavage and when she was wearing cleavage she wore no short skirt. And maybe they chose this form-fitting short dress because Daniel claims in the next episode several times that he recognized her body. Which was a bit gross since they are divorced but we get to that later. For now I love the little competition that is going on between Nolan and Javier. Like I said it was a brilliant idea of Nolan to sabotage the data for the app that they will officially launch at this party. Brings the maximum publicity and hurts both Javier's ego and Daniel's ambitions. Though it shows how committed Nolan is it is also a reminder that he might has too much time when he is not in revenge business with Emily. Aiden's line about the hard drive competition was a nice Disney and family compatible paraphrase for the famous penis comparison. About Victoria's dress. This white dress looks far better than the one she wore at the Monte Carlo themed party. It is sexy and tight but subtle enough. And her hair looks even better with the long and soft curls. And here comes Emily's fateful quote that she could just not hold back. I must admit she could not know what Conrad would do next. So her mocking Victoria with that sentence was meant that she would end up in jail together with her former husband Conrad. Not that she would lose her lover Pascal in that way. Though I do believe that Emily feels not much pity for Victoria. Like it is the same with Victoria herself after Emily lost Aiden. Anyway it would have been better if Emily had held her tongue. Cause I believe that Victoria's delusion about Emily being the mastermind behind Pascal's death not Conrad derives from this quote. And since she is already afraid of what could happen to Pascal she is even more alarmed after this short monologue of Emily. The real problem is that Victoria does not know what Emily's plan is. She assumes the worst of her and thinks she is just out for blood like she and Conrad are themselves. While Emily is only trying to set up a trap for Conrad. Pascal is just her tool. And for me it is clear that she did not want Pascal to die. Even though she told Aiden he could do what he wants with him. In the end I think she would have spared Pascal's life and handed him over to the authorities. After all Emily is no killer and even if she does appear that tough, when it comes to killing people she normally searches for another way to punish her targets. Though it is a bit sad that this major European conflict is used as a background for Javier's fall. It was nice that they got some history and politics in with the war and genocide in Yugoslavia. I can remember that our community was collecting toys and clothes for the people in Sarajevo. And we had a group of children that visited our village. I remember it was the first time I heard people speak in another language that I could not understand. I was so devastated that I could not talk to them because they could not understand what I was saying and I could not understand them. Anyway back to Pascal's mission. I knew that this would epically fail cause they gave us enough hints to be anxious about Pascal's fate. First the conversation between Conrad and Aiden in which Conrad already threatened Aiden with the fact that he would care for Pascal himself if Aiden was not capable to kill him. Second Emily talking about happy ever after. And third the conversation between Victoria and Pascal. When she was that afraid and wanted to leave with him right now. While Pascal assured her everything would be fine. Something they always do in American TV shows and 10 seconds later they are dead or at least in a life-threatening condition. So the big surprise here was not if Pascal would be hurt but how and by whom. Because I must admit that I thought Conrad would lead Pascal into a trap and would watch how he was handled by his thug. But that he would kill Pascal himself and in such a gruesome way. I think no one saw that coming. 
especially because Daniel handed him this option letting Pascal captured by the police. But I guess Conrad was already too suspicious about Pascal and thought he would sold him out when he was in detention. So his only way out was to kill him so his secrets would die with him. And I must admit the stunt with the elevator and Emily taking the stairs was well choreographed. This was maybe the most thrilling scene besides the wedding night with Daniel shooting Emily. Though I loved the whole antiques with the wedding Pascal's death would have been also a great flash forward. Cause the big reveal Conrad killed him could have been a huge surprise. If they pulled it off in the right fashion. At this stage Aiden could have been a suspect, too. Cause Conrad wanted him to do so and Aiden got to know Pascal killed his father. It could have been an accident when Emily and Aiden abducted him. So Emily would have been partly responsible. And last but not least Pascal could have let Victoria down once again. Maybe even conspired with Emily or Conrad against her. And she would have killed Pascal not in cold blood but rage. Instead of the big wedding event or Emily's blackouts they could have explored Victoria's past with Pascal. And gave her more flashbacks with him than this stupid rape plot and the backstory with Patrick. Maybe they even could have made Patrick Pascal's son. Would have been a good drama too if he never knew. Anyway I would have liked to see more of this stuff because Pascal was an intriguing character and the first target who was a real threat for Conrad. Which is the reason why he was willing to handle it himself in the first place I think. Another thing. If Pascal would have been introduced they earlier they could have made the season more about their rivalry. Maybe they even could have find a connection to David's and Victoria's affair. Cause as I said it would have been interesting to know when exactly Conrad got to know about this affair and if this was the real reason to choose David and not Victoria's choice. I know David and Amanda are the main protagonist but since their life is so tangled up with the Graysons. It just would have been nice to explore the Grayson marriage a bit more. Like they did in season 1. They picked up so much from the first season. Why not that? 2. Now that I watched season 2 again this reminds me of the finale in which Emily and Nolan desperately tried to get to Jack before he did the most stupid thing in his life trying to kill Conrad. But now Victoria is literally at her feet which is a great metaphor for the whole scheming Victoria did to uncover Emily's secret. Another reason why I cannot understand that she thinks Emily would collaborate with Conrad. Does she not get it that she and him are the main and end targets for Emily? Everything she does is to gather information about their conspiracy all those years ago and when she is ready she wants to pull the trigger. So why should she let Conrad win and kill the most fruitful source and chance at getting him arrested? This does not make any sense. And if Victoria was in her right mind she would see that. About Packle's death. At first I naively thought Conrad did let the helicopter start to ruin the recording and he would leave without Pascal. And would prepare to let him get arrested like Daniel planned it. But I think when Conrad lured him to the roof he already decided to kill him and never wanted to let Pascal come with him. Because to be not a suspect right away he needed the testimony of the pilot. So he had to plan this and make a deal with him. So that he could be certain the pilot would lie to the police and support his story that it was a tragic accident. Though I do not like how they make a spectacle out of his death with Conrad being covered in blood and the dead body lying beheaded. It made clear that Emily had to take him down before he would kill her or anyone else she cared about next. And finally they showed us how truly dangerous he is. 
spoiler alert, which made it easier to accept that he was killed later. Because that was not only the punishment for his conspiracy but for the murder of Pascal. And I think finding Pascal and seeing his body worsened Victoria's fragile state of mind. It not only fueled her hate for Emily it also triggered this delusion she was the victim of Emily's crimes and had the right to punish her. But we will talk about this more in the next two episodes. For now you can see clearly why they choose White again. To make the maximum out of the artificial blood. And I must admit besides this screaming like a lunatic Madeleine Stowe's performance was again marvelous. Her devastation in this scene when she is surrounded by all those flowers Pascal sent her as a surprise was really heartbreaking. About Jack and Charlotte. Another subtle hint at David coming back in the finale. If you know the pattern in soap opera this was obvious as hell. And I still cannot understand why some fans are still freaking out about this. Maybe I am not impartial since this plot hits home for me after I lost my father as a teenager, too. But for me it was the greatest gift for the last season to see James Tupper, Emily Van Camp and Krista B. Allen how it would be to be reunited with your long-lost father again. And I like that at least Jack cares about her feelings. Since Emily obviously should her that she does not give a damn. About Daniel, Margot and Victoria. I still hate the role he is playing with both of the most important women in his life. He is lying to them both and does not a very good job in comforting them. But I like how this particular triangle turns out in season 4. Cause Margot seems to be the first woman at Daniel's site Victoria actually approves. It is so unforgivable that he uses Margot to get back in the game. And gain he shows how coward he is cause he tells neither Margot not Victoria about his suspicion on Conrad. Worse he is lying into his mother's face. Is he afraid that he could be culpable as confidant or is he just afraid of his father after he killed Pascal? About the end montage song. I love this one. The mood really fits both Emily's and Victoria's devastation. Because Emily is maybe not that affected by Pascal's death. But since she was witnessing what Conrad did she is in danger herself and like any witness of a murder that violent still not over having seen this. And as I said they already preparing for the war between Victoria and Emily. Cause her delusion about Emily and Pascal comes apparent in the next episode as Victoria's need for revenge on Emily. So the lyrics fit both the romantic notion that Pascal knew her better than anyone and filled her bedroom with her favorite flowers. And the sick relationship between Emily and Victoria who finally know each other equally well now Victoria has a clue who Emily really is. I love how the drums are literally calling them both to war. Emily has to make her last strike against both Graysons. While Victoria will try to get revenge on Emily in the next season at any cost like Emily pointed out in her monologue. About Daniel's question. I know he cannot possibly know about Emily's elaborate plan and Victoria surely did not tell him about her suspicion on Emily yet. But if you think about it he is the one who leads Victoria's attention away from Conrad towards Emily. Again he is in some kind protecting his father. I wonder why. Like in season 1 he could have come clean and told the police everything he knows. So all would point out to Conrad and he would be arrested for Pascal's murder and maybe in detention break and talk about his other crimes. Or they could have shown how Victoria told the police everything about his past crimes to make sure that he would stay in prison. And not weasel his way out with the accident story. 
would have been a fitting revenge for her on Conrad after all those years. But I guess they needed this conflict with Charlotte and just wanted the some kind romantic idea that both of David Clark's daughter worked together on Conrad's demise. Though one of them was an unknowing and more accidental participant. And of course her abduction by Emily and Jack's involvement was stuff for great drama around Charlotte in the first few episodes of season 4. But first we get to the great finale and my all-time favorite episodes of Revenge in the next episode talk.